Hello and welcome everyone. Today, I'm excited to show you something truly incredible, a free and open source application that can generate anything your imagination dreams up. In this case, I'm gonna take up the first example over here and I'll generate this. From futuristic worlds to historical mashups, the possibilities are limitless. You won't believe what this tool can create. So stick around for some mind blowing demos first, and then I will explain to you how this application is built and how you can do this in your own system free of cost, right? So this is the second example, uh, Madame Curie and Einstein in a samurai armor working in a lab. Let's generate this. And as you can see, it only takes a few seconds to generate any imagination that you have. All right, so there we go. <laughs> it's a fun image over here too. And not only that, you can click generate again for the same prompt, it uses a different seed. So it regenerates an image and you can have a different image for the same text that you are providing, right? And there's one functionality, if you like the previous image more than this one, you can always navigate back to previous images and you can navigate front to the to the next images. All right, let's take some more examples. Cleopatra and Napoleon walking through neon lit uh, future city. If you do not already know, Cyberpunk is one of my favorite games. Definitely neon lit future city had to make the cut. So uh, there we go, a few seconds and we'll have our image. Wow, okay, awesome. Let's change it another image for the same prompt and see how it looks like. And there we are with the next image. Okay, all right, walking backwards. Very interesting, Cleopatra. Okay, and let's take the next one. Lincoln and Genghis Khan exploring Mars in astronaut gear without helmets. I wonder how they'll survive this, but let's see. Let's see, so let's put this prompt over here. Let's click generate and we'll find out how these guys are living in Mars. Okay, all right, somehow they are surviving. Let's send it another image for the same prompt and see how that one looks like. And this one is pretty cool, nice. Okay, can't tell which one is which, but it looks cool. Okay, let's take the last one. Cleopatra testing a steampunk time machine. Let's take this. Right, and let's generate an image based on this prompt. And there we have, wow, she's embedded in the time machine too. Let's send it another one to see if the AI can fix that. And we'll have the next image soon. Okay, perfect, this, this looks pretty cool. I, I do like the details on the, on the time machine over here, right? This is pretty cool, right? N not only that, you can actually, you can actually avoid certain things if you want from, from an image, right? And you can also ask LLM for a creative idea. So let's say if you have typed something over here, so let's say steampunk time machine. And based on this prompt, you don't really know what you want, but you want something with steampunk time machine in it. Then you can type your thoughts over here. You can click on ask LLM for creative idea, right? So what this does is it takes this thing, sends it to the, to the large language model and all this is running locally. There is no external interaction over here. So all your imagination and craziness and NSFW, Imagination is staying in your browser. So whatever you generate, it's not going out. So once you ask LLM for a creative idea, you apply the creative prompt, so it goes over here, and then you can click generate image. And then based on this idea that LLM has generated, you will get another image. And you can see the details on this. This is pretty cool. It is really, really detailed. And you can actually resend this to the large language model, which will take this prompt, regenerate a different prompt. You can use now this new different prompt over here and you can have this thing generated. But you, you will see that your previous prompt was generated using this new prompt, so it still sticks around. So let's say if you want uh, Mars 
and then you want some kind of idea based on Mars. You can click Mars, you can click Ask LLM for an idea, and then you can use the creative prompt from LLM, and then you can generate that image over here. So let's see what it does. And there we go. Wow, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool, right? Um, you can also have some, some other, so let's say, cyberpunk being my one of my favorite games let's see what large language model gives me an idea based on that okay and it's use this creative prompt and try to generate an image over here and after this prompt then we'll go into looking at what does it take to build this application wow this is awesome this is really cool right very very awesome y you can actually um, hide certain things that you don't want to see in an image, right? So let's say a uh, woman in her 50s, right? Let's let's have large language model generate some kind of prompt for that, for a woman in her 50s. And uh, let's have it generate that. And then I'll show you what the negative prompt means. So once the image is generated, we will see, yep, there is a picture of a woman in her 50s. You can see there are some wrinkles on her face and, and that's fine. It's it's a deeply detailed portrait, right? And that's why it is looking like a portrait over here, right? So perfect. What we'll do is we just want to remove wrinkles. So we'll just type wrinkles over here and we will send generate image again. Now it's going to use a different seed. So she won't be the same woman, uh, but the woman's picture that you will see will not have wrinkles. So it's still trying, you know, to create a 50 year old woman and trying to remove wrinkles from her face, right? So this is pretty cool. Not only do you have positive prompt for the things that you do want the model to follow and generate, you also want model to not generate certain things. So it still follows your um, prompt but it removes those things from there. So there are some, some things that people in the prompt engineering for generating images normally use. For example, um, blurry watermark, low quality. These are the things that you do not want in a picture. So I've provided uh, a way for you to just add these attributes by click of a button, right? And then there are certain things that you want in a prompt like 4K, highly detailed, hyper-realistic and all that. And there is a way to click that and then generate an image also. So let's let's do this. This would be the last thing that we will do. And then right after that, we will take a look at how you would install this particular application. So an application like this is working based off of a few different components that are on your system. So let me let me now switch to a diagram over here. So I'm gonna talk about how you would set up such an application. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to this diagram. So this is what you have. The Dream Canvas is an application that you have that you were taking a look at right now, where you have a positive negative prompt, you have Ask LLM for creative idea, you have generate image and all that. And how is this all working architecturally? So you have, in reality, two different applications that are running in the background. One is Olama. So why Olama? Because you have uh, this large language model interaction, which you are sending your positive prompt to Olama to generate some kind of large language model related prompt back for you. So the response back for you that you will utilize to generate the image. So this is the Olama related interaction that you have. And I have curated the system prompt in such a way for this large language model that you do get a very decent positive prompt out of it, right? So there's a curated system prompt for the large language model that is working in the background over here. It's not just a simple uh, prompt, it's a curated prompt for your image generation. And I will show you where, where all that is in the code. And then second, there is something called Comfy UI that is running as a server in the background, right? So if you are not aware of what Comfy UI is, I have a playlist created uh, on my YouTube channel 
uh, where you can go and you can take a look at what Comfy UI is and how you would set up Comfy UI. So there is a Comfy UI uh, setup guide where I walk you through step by step on how to set up Comfy UI in your local. And there are some other simple Comfy UI related guides too, where uh, I've shown you how uh, do you utilize Comfy UI in general, right? So, so functional aspects of Comfy UI. And also if you are developing for Comfy UI API endpoints, then how do you do that? So there is this, this guide also over here. So once, uh, it, the, for the more curious people, uh, you can watch these videos too. But if you just want to see how this is working, I I'll, I'll, I'll show you in detail this uh, architecture and uh, the the solution uh, design for this Dream Canvas application in a second. So when you click on this uh, generate button, essentially the Q prompt button of the Comfy UI is invoked, but programmatically, right? So whatever is happening in this Q prompt uh, is what this generate button is doing, but it is doing it programmatically by submitting this request to the Comfy UI's API. And if you want to know more about the Comfy UI's API design, this is the video to take a look at uh, where I have went in detail about that. Okay, so you take your positive prompt, you take your negative prompt, and those positive and negative prompts are inserted in a workflow JSON file. And then you click the Q prompt and internally by submitting all that, you're getting the res response image back, which is then uh, being shown in this user interface, right? So how is all this working? So let's start step by step and I will show you how everything is working. So um, let me open this, uh, Visual Studio code over here. So the code that you see for Dream Canvas application is all available on github.com freely for you to utilize. And if you don't want to um, go into details of everything, if you just want to run this application, then there is a Docker way of doing it. And I'll talk about that first, how to set up this application. And then I will talk about how this application was built. So for those of us who just want to get up and running by setting it up, there is a Docker file provided over here, right? And uh, you can either use the Docker way of running it, or you can just use the regular uh, Python way of running it. If you, if you feel comfortable with Docker, this is the best, fastest way to get up and running uh, because you just run two commands and, and you are up, but then you do need to have Docker installed uh, on your local. So um, the prerequisites for this Dream Canvas is Comfy UI installed in your local and Olama installed in your local, right? So if you do want, if you do want the Ask Large Language Model for Creative Idea button to be working, you need Olama also installed in your local. If you don't care about the Large Language Model buttons over here, you don't have to install Olama. All right, so let's go back over here. How do you set this application up? So you, you'll need to have some kind of environment management. And I use Conda for the environment management. And uh, Conda is really helpful because what uh, you can do is you can separate out your environments in different uh, folders and then you can manage them easily. So the, the way to set it up is you, you first uh, clone this repo, right? And you go inside the repo. And then you create a Conda environment of Dream Canvas, right? So just create a Conda environment, activate it. And once you are done activating this Conda environment, then you will run these commands. And these are step-by-step -step copy paste commands. You don't have to do anything else. You can do a pip install requirements.txt. And in your .env file, you just have to make sure that your servers are correctly configured, right? So there are two servers that are working Comfy UI server and Olama server. So if everything is in your local, um, then this would be localhost colon 8188, 
which is what the default is configured anyway. So if it is just localhost 8188, you don't even have to provide this .env file. If your Olama server is running at localhost colon 11434, then you don't even have to provide this file. In my case, my Olama server and ConfiWire server are running on this IP address, this port, and this IP address 11436 port. Yes, mine is running on 11436 port. All right, so once you have provided these things, and if you don't want to use the default Llama 3.1 model, but you want to use your own model, right? So for example, I want to use my Hermes 3 70 billion parameter model. In that case, you can provide your Olama model details also in your .env file, right? So this is how your application when you get clone it will look like and this is how you will set it up. So these three steps you have to do, you have to clone, create Conda environment, install requirements, and uh, of course set up the environment, and then you can just run this command, uvcorn backend.main colon app, and reload if you are doing development, or you can skip this, and minus minus host, of this and port of this, right? So host this lets you access this application from different uh, external hosts as well uh, that that are not just the local host, right? But uh, this will let you access your application now uh, from localhost colon 8000, which is the port that you have uh, bound your application to. So this is it, running the server is pretty easy. You can, you can clone, create Conda, activate Conda, install requirements, set up your environment file, and run this particular command, and you'll be up and running. If you prefer Docker way of running this application, then the steps are even more easier. You clone the repo, you just do a Docker build, and while you are doing the Docker build, all these steps are executed automatically for you inside your Docker, right? So you do the Docker build, and you do a Docker run and your application will be up and running, which is the way how I'm running it, right? So if I um, show you over here, so this is my AI server, which is 192.168.1.10, right? So I was talking about that particular uh, configuration in my environment variable, 1.10, I can show you ping AI and, okay, not from here. So <laughs> ping AI and you will see 192.168.1.10 is being pinged over here, right? And if I do SSH into my server, you can see that I am now in this particular server over here. And I want to show you Docker TS. These are the Docker containers that are running in my local. And the one that you see over here is Dream Canvas application. So this Dream Canvas is running my Comfy UI is running as well on 8188 and my Olama server is running on 11436, right? So these are the three applications that are currently working together in order for the Dream Canvas application to show up, right? So um, if I go back to Excalidra, Olama, Comfy UI, and Dream Canvas. These are the three applications in three different Docker containers over here, Olama, Comfy UI and Dream Canvas. These three applications are working together, all right. So once you know how to run this application, you can um, you can play around with it. And, and if that is all that you want to do, then you can stop watching this video now and just go, go to the GitHub, get the a code and start running it, right? But if you're curious, if you want to know how this application is built, then stay with me and I'll be explaining how this application was built and how, uh, if you wanna make some modifications in this, how would you do that? If you wanna change the system prompt to be more um, naughty, then you can modify the system prompt and it will always generate naughty images for you. And be mindful, um, I mean, uh, these models are trained to be not safe for work. So you can ask them to generate anything, literally anything, and it will generate anything. Don't ask me how I know that. So let's go and take a look at the code now. 
So the code is divided into two different sections, UI and backend, right? So there are two different sections of the code. Now, detailed explanation of everything is provided in two places. One is in the same readme file, right? So the same readme file on the dream canvas that we were looking uh, at right now for setting up the application, there is a functionality provided over here in, in terms of, there is a description of functionality provided over here, right? So uh, you can see what every aspect of the dream canvas application means. So positive prompt is what you actually want the image generated to look like, right? So that's the positive prompt. And negative prompt is what you want the model to avoid. And then there is a LLM assisted prompt generation over here, quick prompts. Uh, and and I'll, I'll talk about the quick, quick prompts too. And then there is image caching and navigation. So when we were on the UI and we are looking at previous images, so these images are cached over here and then you can navigate through them. This is this functionality. And then the UI reset functionality that is provided at the very bottom over here. When you click the reset, everything resets back to its default configuration, right? Uh, the architecture is divided into backend and frontend, right? So the frontend is everything on the UI that you see and the user interface that you see. And I'm gonna reset the frontend zoom level to zero um, so that you can see what I'm gonna show you next in the inspect over here. So now at the bottom, you see that there is a developer tools open and I'm going to go to the network tab. In network tab, I have two things normally open when I'm trying to see what are the network interactions that are happening. So if you click on this very first button over here, right? So let's, let's click on this button and you see there is a ask LLM interaction that happened and there was uh, a call that went to AI colon 8000 slash ask LLM. So there is a request that is happening to this particular endpoint. And I will show you where this endpoint is. This is all within our application over here. But there is a request that went over here and a response that came back. So the assistant response that we got back was this particular response, right? And this is what is being inserted over here in this box. So this is one. Uh, the second uh, request that, that you will see over here is uh, this generate image request. So I'm gonna click on this button over here and you will see that there is this request that is going on right now. You haven't received the response yet. And once you see the response, you see, you got that particular response back. So you um, do not see the response over here clearly because it is not uh, rendered correctly in this particular view, but this is the request that was being sent 200. Okay, you received the response back. The content was this particular uh, content type of image and you did get the response back or here is what you see. Now, the third interaction that you have is uh, the the JSON interaction, the, the JSON prompt, uh, the quick prompt interaction, right? And for me to show you that, I'll have to refresh the page because that call gets called automatically at the, at the page refresh. So I'm gonna refresh the page and you will see there's a quick prompts interaction that happened. What is that? So the quick prompts is actually all these prompts that you see over here, right? So Halloween quick prompts, Christmas quick prompts, and you can create your own quick prompts over here too. So what are quick prompts? So quick prompts is an easy way to get and to get up and running with an image, right? So let's say if you want to generate a Halloween related image, uh, which has moon and a witch in it, and then you want a creative idea for large language model. So keep also keep an eye over here, right? Then you click this. So now the, the quick prompt, just with click of a few buttons, you are able to generate some kind of a thought that the large language model put together. And now you can use this particular thought and then generate an image out of it. And I like uh, 1024 by, let's say, a 512 is fine. And we'll, we'll generate an image over here. Um, and 
it will generate the image in 25 steps and you see how cool is that that you had a thought from the quick prompt and you are able to generate an image so if you are let's say a cyberpunk themed person then you can create a quick prompt using the cyberpunk themed uh, ideas over here but how do you configure this these quick prompts so let's take a look at that first and then we will talk about other functionalities over here so quick prompts section is right here so you see that there is a halloween quick prompt and a christmas quick prompts right so this is what is being shown over here halloween quick prompts and the christmas quick prompts so in case you want to modify these quick prompts all you can do over here easily is by create your own section and just add it to this array right so if you want you can uh, i don't want halloween and christmas let's say for whatever reason and if you want um let's see let's say if you want uh, a cyberpunk themed quick prompts you can write cyberpunk and in the label you can say neon city and you can have something like neon city um colored lights right and you can have whatever you want over here right essentially so whatever you you display over here will actually show up on the ui and then Uh, okay, let's let's accept these recommendations that I'm getting from my continue. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll accept that and then let's see how this displays. So uh, all I have to do is first is to uh, stop this particular Docker container, right? So Docker stop dream dream canvas and I'll just run it from the local over here because that, that would be the best way to show you quickly, right? So what I will do is uvcarn backend main host and it will run from here now. And if I do a refresh over here, you will see that I am getting a cyberpunk themed quick prompts over here now, right? So if I click on one of these neon colored lights, uh, it goes over here and you must have also seen that it removed um, the Halloween and Christmas over here, right? So doing all that, asking LLM for an idea, using the LLM's inputs, changing it to 1024 and generating an image. And based on our <laughs> theme over here there we go so the quick prompt is just like an easy way of adding certain things that you want on the ui so you do not have to go in and code right so th this is where this quick prompt.json file has been provided to you where you can just keep on adding like if you have multiple different sections and categories of quick prompts that you want you can add them over here too and if you just want a simple quick prompt that should always appear below the positive prompt or the negative prompt, you can do that too. So you can just add them in this list, a positive or negative quick prompt, which shows right below the positive and the negative quick prompt over here, right? So these are just uh, some quality of life uh, improvements that I provided over here, where you do not have to go in the code to make the changes, but you can do, 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 do these changes by using these configuration files over here. This quick prompts underscore JSON being one of such configuration files. All right, so how is this working? So in all, there are three requests that are going from the UI to the backend, right? So the very first request being the quick prompts, the second request being ask LLM, and the third request being generate images. Where are these requests? So let's take a look at our code again. And like I said earlier, there are two main sections over here. One is a UI section and one is a backend section. Right? So backend section contains the code where your 
fast API application is set up and running. And before I go in and explain everything, I want to show you the documentation for this too. So if you go back to the Dream Canvas application, in the, doc in the architectural documentation, you will see that there are three key endpoints, generate images, ask LLM, and quick prompts, right? So these are three main endpoints that we have. And the structure of these endpoints is described, up, described over here too. And then on the front end, we have some UI components uh, and certain, certain tools and libraries that we have used uh, that, well, in this front end, it, the, the tools and libraries that we have used are very, very simple. So we have just used Bootstrap um, for, for our theming and for some JavaScript. Uh, simple, plain, simple JavaScript, right? Nothing fancy over here. So some some jQuery that we have used and uh, HTML. So there is no special framework. There's no Angular. There's no Next.js. There is no fancier framework over here. It's plain, simple HTML and JavaScript, which is what you will see an index.html file, a JavaScript file, and a CSS file. There's three simple files that are working together to create this application. And if you want to go in detail for each one of these documentations, then the whole documentation is also provided for both UI and the backend, right? So if you go to the code over here and you click on this docs, over here, then all the documentation, detailed documentation for backend and for frontend is provided over here. And also documentation for building and deploying this application is also provided, right? So there are, there are these three documentation files, the frontend architecture, where all the different JavaScript methods are written down over here. So there is a, there is a interaction when you do, when you click on the UI, uh, for ask LLM. So there is a spinner that is moving when you click on the UI for this, there is a timer that is being shown, right? So all these JavaScript interactions that are happening, all of them are documented over here with the start timer, stop timer, show notification. So that is like when you click a button and there is a notification that is shown on the top, uh, all, all those. If you want to go into detail of the UI, that documentation is right here. So there are certain buttons that, that have certain functionalities and features. Um, they are all shown uh, on this particular documentation, right? So load quick prompts, uh, add positive keyword, ask LLM buttons, event listeners, right? So there are certain event listen listeners that are attached to the buttons. When you click a button, which function should be called? And, and this is what describes it. So the UI, the way UI is set up is, is right here, all the different uh, uh, inputs and outputs for every main component of the UI is listed in this documentation most of us will be interested not in the UI, but in the backend architecture. So I wanted to quick touch base on the UI and then move on to the backend architecture, which is the heart of this application, right? So in the backend architecture, you'll see that there are these four main files that we have. So the first file is main.py, which is the entry point for our fast API application. And then we have routes.py where all the routes are defined. What are the routes? There are three routes. Quick prompts, ask LLM and generate images, right? So all those three routes are defined in this and the actual implementation, the business logic for those three routes is in the services.py. So this actually is a very modular architecture because it breaks the code into components based on the functionality and it promotes something called separation of concerns and it improves the maintainability of the code. So when the code will become larger and then the application will grow, then you will find that having this modular approach will help you out in developing the application, right? So we have uh, a, a very detailed documentation over here for, for this code. 
that you can go in and you can take a look at right so the entry point the application's entry point is the main.py so let's open this and let's take a look at that so in the back end folder the entry point is main.py and this is a very simple simple looking file over here and what you can see is that the application is initialized over here in the main.py and the main.py serves as the entry point for this whole application right so it, it mounts uh, the the different routes by having the include router function so let me show you this over here so by having this include router uh, function and having the api router from the router of the fast api right so what, what now what we are going to do is uh, there is already a dot routes by file that is created where your api router is defined so let me actually show you that first so you see this api router is defined over here so this router is what we are talking about and this api router is coming from your fast api so we define this api router over here and then we we have the reference from routes.py's router in our main.py, right? And, and let me show you that now. So let's go back to the main.py and you will see that we are importing from dot routes, we are importing router as API router, right? So we are just renaming in a way the router to API router. And then we are including this router as our routes. So this is how the modular approach is that you, instead of writing all the code for the API router in the same file, you just delegate it to a different file, which is routes.py. And in routes.py, you define all of your different routes. So what are those routes? So we talked about three routes, right? So the first route is quick prompts. The second route is ask LLM and the third route is generate images. But you will see there is one more route over here, which is slash. So what is this route? This route is when you load up your application, when you are just typing colon 8000, right? So that route needs to serve your HTML file. So when, when you want to see the index.html file served when you type colon 8000, which is what happens with the default route. So the slash then just goes to UI slash index.html and it serves that particular file to your browser. So they are in reality four routes, the very first route being the default route for your static file rendering. Now, the the you if you go back to the UI over here and if you take a look, let me refresh this, right? So the very first route that we see is quick prompts. Let's take a look at that first. So the very first route that we see is the quick prompts. What happens in the quick prompts route? So in the quick prompts route, you will see that we just delegate our code to go to get quick prompts data method, right? And this get quick prompts data method is defined, you guessed it right, in our services.py because we're not gonna do any business logic over here. The business logic is delegated to services.py. So let's go up on the top and you will see that from services, we are including generate images, get quick prompt and ask LLM service, right? So there are three particular um, service methods that are being included in this file and all those three service methods are the real business logic that executes and they are all kept inside this services.py. So if, if I click over here in services.py, you will see this file is actually a big file over here where all of the code, the business logic of the code resides, right? So let's go back to routes. We'll see get quick prompts data. This is the method that runs when you call quick prompts. I'm gonna control click on it. So it takes us to this particular uh, data over here, uh, this method over here. So you will see this is one of the simplest methods. Why? Because all it does is it loads this particular JSON file. We had already seen the quick prompts.json file, right? The one that we modified with the cyberpunk quick prompts. So it just loads this file and sends it back, right? So there is no interaction essentially in terms of complex business logic over here. 
all we are doing is we are just loading that quick prompts.json file from the from the point in the application where the application was run right so if you notice we ran the application from the dream canvas uh, folder level so it is just loading the quick prompts.json file from there and it is returning it back as simple as that now the second interaction let's see what's that so if the if we click all this and if we click on ask LLM for creative idea, you see that there is this interaction that happened, right? So there is a ask LLM interaction that happened. The request URL is AI colon 8000 slash ask LLM. So here a call must have gone to some kind of large language model. Let's see how we did that. So it, you, you cannot see what the actual large language model implementation is over here. Is it going to Olama? Is it going to open AI or where? You don't see that. Uh, you just see that there was a request payload and you see there was a response that the server sent back to you. But where is that server? That implementation is in our routes.py ask LLM, right? So this is the route. This is the initial route where the request is going to slash ask LLM. And if you click on this ask LLM service method now, right? So when, when this route is invoked, this code is called, and this is where your service method is. So I'm gonna control click on this. So you will see an actual service method. So this is where your data is coming in and you are sending the request to your large language model, right? So you see that only the positive prompt is being passed along to this Olama server over here. And you'll see that we have role system, system prompt and role user, positive prompt, right? So there is a system prompt that is written that is being reused over here. Where is that system prompt? So let me control click on this and you will see that the system prompt is on the top. This is what I was talking about, that this particular system prompt is curated for creating good quality image descriptions that Confi UI uses, right? So this is the instruction that I've given to the system prompt. Let me make this as a word wrap so it will be clear. So the system prompt in this use case for the large language model is that you are an AI model that transforms user inputs into concise, creative, and visually descriptive prompts for AI image generation. Now, we also wanted that if there is no prompt on the Dream Canvas application, right? So let, let me show you this use case. If I reload, there is nothing over here. There's no positive prompt over here. If you click on ask LLM for creative idea right now, like with no thought in your mind, it will still create something. Right, so you, you can you can still create something and you can still generate an image, but with nothing in the mind, how did it come back? So this is the scenario that I have explained next. If the user input is empty, generate a creative detailed description automatically. Right, so there is a, a, a suggestion given to the large language model that do not give up if there is an empty request over there always respond with a single visually descriptive line incorporating elements such as hyperrealistic 4k and detailed imagery when applicable right so if you see it said that it is captured hyperrealistically and the ai models the the text to image models work better when you add these words to it, these keywords to it, 4K and all that. So highly detailed. Uh, so what I've done is in the in this curated system prompt, I've already baked this into the cake that, hey, if the user is asking for an idea, then it's your responsibility as a large language model to add such elements into it based on whatever you feel is necessary. And then there are some guidelines that have been provided that you have to be specific and clear, ensure that the response describes the subject, right? And keep it brief. We do not want a paragraph, you know, length of the request going to the image description. So uh, keep it concise, simple, and encourage creativity, handle empty inputs. This was what I was talking about earlier. And then do not do extra communication. 
right? So we do not want large language model to say, yes, there is your image description and then write the image description. We just want the actual transformed prompt without any additional commentary. And this is very crucial because you see that the prompt returned back is just exactly that. So even if we, we try to talk to the user, uh, to the large language model by saying uh, cyberpunk is good, uh, let's see, let's see if the large language model can handle it. And you see the, the response that we get back is not the large language model engaging into a conversation with us, but actually creating a description that can be transformed into a image for us, right? So this, this, is, this is pretty cool, this is important. So uh, respond only with the transform form without additional commentary. And then I've provided some samples. So all these large language models, they actually work really, really good when you provide them with some inputs and the outputs for, uh, for the model to follow, right? So there, there is a set of inputs and outputs baked into the system prompt itself. So usually when we are providing these few short templates, we can also uh, include it into our conversation mode, but you can also include it into the system prompt that works very well too. So in our case, we have included into the system prompt and you will see that uh, the system prompt uh, these inputs and outputs for an empty one. There is something provided over here too. This was a, an exceptional em empty one. And then for something that is non-empty, there are some examples. Okay, if there is a watercolor painting, then you have to type like this. If there is a magical forest and you have to type like this. And then the large language model has some kind of guidance that this is how for such examples, I have to do this. So for some other examples, what will I do? So even if you give the exact same input over here, it will not create the exact same output. It will just take that as a reference. Let's try that out. So it will take the exact same input it will ask LLM for a response back and let's see if it followed it exactly the way or not. So a dreamy watercolor painting and all that. Let's see. It actually did. Warm street lights. Let's see with warm. Oh, wow. Okay, perfect. So it, it actually did. Let's change it a little bit and see what it does. Um, it should follow it closely enhanced. <laughs> it actually is kind of failing over here a little bit. But okay, uh, if you give it an exact same input, then it will have very similar or exact same output because we have told to do that and it is following it pretty closely anyway. So the system prompt is very important. Let me go back over here, ask LLM service, and you will see that this particular request is very simple. We are creating our payload over here and this is the chat ML format where we provide the system, role system, role user. This is our chat ML format uh, payload. And we are just using the requests library to send this request to the Olama server. And we are getting the response back. And we are using from the choices zero message content part of it only, right? So the, the, the actual response that we get back, the content part of that we're gonna use over here. Okay, so this is the, let me re reload this again. So we are back, so quick prompts we did. Then we asked LLM, this is the second one that we took a look at. And now um, clicking this use creative prompt button just moves this prompt to this box. So this is not fancy, but I'll just do it anyway. So you will see this moved it over here. There is no backend interaction for this, right? So there are some buttons for which there is no backend interaction. It is just UI JavaScript that moves content from these boxes to these other box, these buttons to these boxes, right? And, and now this is where, let me change it. Oops, no, 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 25 steps and 1024 width over here. So now when you click on generate over here, this is your third interaction from the Dream Canvas application. And in this interaction, we are actually going out and constructing our JSON payload for Comfy UI.
right? So let me let me quick switch to this X Kelly draw diagram and then I will switch to code to explain that. So now we have to take the positive prompt, negative prompt, and we have to click on generate button to queue prompt. And then whatever we get back, we have to show it back on the UI, right? So this is the use case that we are talking about now. In detail, I have talked about how do you do this programmatically in this particular video. But in short, I will show you in case you don't want to watch this 32 minute long video, I will show you in short how that happens. So once you have the Comfy UI installed in your local, you can go to the settings and make sure that this option is enabled. Enable dev mode options, API save option. This option is enabled for you, right? If you don't have it enabled, you won't see this button that I'm gonna talk about. So make sure that option is enabled and your save API format button is visible. This is where you can click on this save API and it shows you workflow API JSON. And this workflow API JSON is the JSON payload that is sent to the Comfy API server, right? So Comfy UI's API server. Now, I'm not gonna save it. I already have saved it in my local over here. So workflow.json, this is also checked in, right? So the code is checked in over here, and this is the same workflow.json file that I'm talking about. So you will see that this workflow.json file has total of seven um, JSON elements over here, right? So it starts with a three. I know it doesn't start with zero, one or two. It starts with a three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, and nine. Ninth being the seventh one. And each one of these are actually representative of the nodes that are on the Comfy UI. Right? So when you saved this API format, uh, JSON, it actually saved all these different nodes, these seven nodes, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These seven nodes, it saved into that API format. And the way, if you, if you see this particular one, uh, all these texts and everything was also saved in our JSON over here, right? So let, let me go back to the JSON. So all these different attributes were saved over here. So for example, when I saved it, I had the checkpoint name as this. So checkpoint name is nothing but the model name that the AI model is using. And if I go back to the Comfy UI, I can show you that this is how I had saved it, right? So real Wiz X V50 Lightning and all that. Uh, and this is how it shows up over here. So node number four being the second node. So it started from three and the second node is node number four over here for us. So this is where it, it is saving these attributes and node number three being the K sampler over here, right? So three is the K sampler. Somehow this is the first node that it has saved and four is the load checkpoint, right? So somehow it has, <laughs> it, it has put it like this. So three and then four. Um, and, and, and going forward. Okay, let me reset this view and load the default over here so it goes back. So now that you have your uh, workflow.json file, you can import it in your project. And once you have imported it in your project, I wanna quick run this main.py file. So this main.py file is actually a simple Python program that interacts with your Comfy UI server using this workflow.json file that you have. So this is a standalone program that does what your route for your uh, generate images does, right? So this generate images route, before developing it, I built this main.py file so I can at least interact with the Comfy UI server from my terminal over here. So in order for me to interact on my terminal that I will, um, I can actually shut down the, the Comfy UI server. I don't need to, but I can sh shut it down and then I will just run python main.py over here. 
So this program, if you run, it will walk you through step by step on how it is actually generating the image, right? So how you are interacting and you are generating the image. So you will see that step number one is initializing the connection and all that. And it is going to print out in a very nice, pretty format, everything over here. So you first load the configuration file from the .env file, right? You create a client ID using UUID and then you enter your positive prompt. So let's say cyberpunk and then it's asking for a negative prompt and let's say um, neon as a negative prompt. And now the user has entered the prompts in there. So you hit continue. Now the WebSocket connection is being made. So WebSocket connection is like a two-way uh, direct connection. And you don't need to do multiple HTTP calls back and forth once you have a WebSocket connection. So this WebSocket connection is provided by your Confi UI server. So you see that it is going out to your configured Confi UI server from your .env file. So in my .env file, I have this server configured. Now hit enter and it is loading your workflow.json file that you have saved from your Confi UI. So I have already saved it in my local, but I had shown you how you can enable the save API format and save it. This is the same workflow.json file that is being used over here. Now let's see what the workflow.json file looks like. I'm going to hit enter and to display that. So this is how your workflow.json file looks like. And this is what we'll be modifying now with our inputs, right? So let's let's customize this workflow.json file because this is the payload to the API. So now these were the inputs that we have provided. There are some hard coded inputs over here and the random seed for the text generation, but this is what we'll be using to configure and customize our uh, workflow.json file. And now it has uh, queued the prompt and it, the, the prompt is ready to be sent. Uh, the, the JSON, the payload has been created now to, to be sent and you can view the payload. So let's hit enter to see the payload and you will see that the, the data has been replaced. So in the negative prompt, which is the node number seven, the data has been replaced to neon and in the positive prompt, the data has been replaced to cyberpunk, right? So all that has been done now and let's go at the bottom and let's send this prompt to the server. Right. So uh, now you have sent the prompt to the server. The WebSocket connection was already there. So you can see the progress. And then you go to the history endpoint and then you go to the view endpoint and you download the image. So once you follow this file and you go to each and every step within the code, you will see how this is actually working. And then we close the WebSocket connection and we save the image locally. When I hit continue, you will see that, that the image will be saved in here. It hasn't been saved yet, but when I hit continue, you will see a new image appeared over here. And let's open this and see, this is the cyberpunk themed non neon light image that it has generated. All right, so the reason why I included this main.py file over here is so that you can generate images just by a simple Python script. And this will enable you to understand how to create the service for your actual implementation, right? So in the routes.py, when you let me, let me now, let me just um, start up my UVCon server. So we can go back to our dream canvas, but let me hide this panel too. So, okay. So in this generate images section, right? So if I go back to the dream canvas in this generate images call that we have um, over here, we are doing this call generate images. This is a router endpoint. And in this, we are collecting all the requests from the prompt request. And so we are getting the positive prompt, negative prompt, steps, width, height, and all that. And then exactly in the same way how in the main.py we were configuring our uh, actual request by embedding it into workflow.json file. 
is what we are doing over here too. So we are embedding our request into our workflow.json file and then we are sending this particular request to the endpoint. For, so we are creating a WebSocket connection, we are queuing a prompt, we are getting the history, and then we are downloading the image, right? So we are doing all these four steps in the background now, right? So how are we doing it? We are doing it by uh, following the same image generation process that we had for our uh, main.py file. Okay, so once you have, and, and, the, and the code is right here. If you go to uh, your services.py and you do a comparison with the main.py, you will see that there are some reused code that have been brought from the main.py into services.py so that the a streamlined operation is over here. Okay, so now that you get the data back, the image data back, all we have to do is to just display it and show it over here. So these are the three main interactions that we have and all three of them have been shown in our routes.py, which is the, the main router for the application. All right, so There is another reset button at the bottom and all it does is it resets the UI so it goes back and when I click on this you will see that there is no UI uh, sending any call. Let me actually open this network tab back again and you will see that there is no UI call that happens to the backend for this purpose, right? It is just a JavaScript application over here. All right. Okay. That is it. Actually, that is all I want to show you today. Uh, the code has been uploaded over here. You can, you can go over here and download the code. If you want some help in setting up the server, then I have this particular guide, Ultimate Linux AI Server Setup for Quad NVIDIA 3090. And the links to all this would be in the video description. The link to the GitHub code, the link to this particular playlist, and everything will be in the description over here for the video. Thank you guys for watching and please leave, leave your comments in the, in the comment section. I'd like to see your opinions if you want to see uh, videos like this or if you want to um, see any changes to this application that you would like or any particular area of uh, the application that you'd like me to focus on and explain more, I can do that. I want to move on to a different series where I would um, integrate this with some kind of assistant. And the thought that I have in my mind is where um, I'm having a conversation with uh, an assistant, an actual speech-to-speech -speech conversation with an, with an AI assistant, and on the fly, it is generating certain images for me, the way it is perceiving that conversation, right? So, so this is something that I would like to do, and uh, this is where I will interact with Comfy UI. All right, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.